There it is, the game that started it all back in 1997. A game you play today and you question to yourself, how could something like this become popular? I say this because if you try to do the game's missions, you know, the way it's supposed to be played, you can't do them. The game does give you an arrow on where to go, but it doesn't tell you that you're about to run into the water and die. I mean, the game has no real way of telling you where you are. So then you think, oh, just look up the map and then you should be fine. But the, here's the problem, the game has no map. Or at least I don't think it does. So upon further inspection, it turns out that there is actually a map. But it's a real-life map, so I mean, you would have to reference your location in the game, then hope that you find it on here. I mean, a map is better than no map, but still. I don't see why they couldn't have put this into the game with a, you know, that one of those you are here things. I guess they must have ran out of space. And this aspect would be very annoying because you would be pausing every few minutes trying to figure out where you are and where you need to go. This being a physical map also means that not everyone was guaranteed a copy. Of course, nowadays we could just look it up on the internet because it's there, but back in the 90s, if you didn't have a map, you were just screwed. So getting back to the gameplay and the question of why people like this, it's because of the reason people like GTA nowadays. It's because you can go on a rampage, kill people, jack as many cars as you want, put in cheat codes, get all the fun weapons, and just go hog wild. But if you're in the minority like me who wants to do all the missions, and you just can't. Alright, with that all out of the way, let's see what else this game has. Uh, is there a story? No? I guess that makes sense for something as arcadey as this, but... Whatever. Um, you can choose your character, including females. That's, uh, pretty neat. Even though when you play, you, you always look the same. Um, if you recall the map earlier, there was three cities on it. Liberty City, Vice City, and San Andreas. All here, right at the beginning, right before, or long before they all had their own games. You would start off in Liberty City, but then have to unlock the other two by getting enough money. You can do this by either doing the missions or getting into a big enough rampage to, well, get enough. Because in this game, it pays you to kill people, destroy cars, all that good stuff. Um, there are the controls, which are really weird because instead of being able to move your character by pressing up, down, left, or right, you have to turn to which direction you want them to go in, then hold down the X button to make them move. Another gripe I have with the controls is the fact that you have to use the square button to enter and exit the uh, vehicles instead of the triangle button like every other game. Other than that, it felt f everything feels fine, even though when driving it's really hard to steer the vehicle, but I think that's more the fact that they're, the vehicles are just way too big. You end up bumping into everything. The last thing I'll say about the controls is that uh, just, this just shows how juvenile the um, creators really were with them making an entire button dedicated to farting and burping. Although that could have been used for anything else, but I mean, if they had it, I guess they just had an extra button and decided to slap that in there. It's pretty perfect for a game like this. Now I want to talk about one of the more major issues I had with this game, which is the fact that it's way too zoomed in. Because of this, you cannot see where you are going properly. The buildings cover up your view, and you're going to end up crashing your car a bunch of times because whenever you turn, it just zooms in for some reason. And the camera is just way too shaky for no reason. There's also the fact that you have no life bar, so it's like you have no idea if you're about to die or not. Not that it matters, you die in a few hits anyway. You also uh, are 100% screwed if you end up catching on fire. You can't even run into a vehicle to try and put it out. There's also the fact that for some reason the music is inconsistent. Like if you get in a car, sometimes it'll have a radio like working or sometimes it just won't. There's also the fact that um, there's like this constant guitar beat playing in the background for most of the time. And it could even overlap on the radio music. It's just weird. 
and you can't even choose what type of music you get it's based off of what type of vehicle you're driving like if you were to get into a truck you would be stuck with country music there is also the unfortunate fact that one of the best aspects of these older gta's is not available in this version of the game which is the over-the-top announcer i mean really if you look up um his voice clips there there's something to listen to something else uh what else is there um the graphics i guess i mean i guess they look all right for uh 1997 definitely a uh, inverse to the later games or even the game after this and gta 3 as well the fact that it's also colorful when those two the next two games are so drab and dreary I think that's all I gotta say about this game, so next I'm just gonna wrap this up with my uh, final thoughts on it. So what is my conclusion for the first Grand Theft Auto? Honestly, I would say that this game is a lot less of a game and more of a prototype. A prototype for the rest of the series. Now I know this can be true about a lot of first games in series, like them trying to figure out what exactly to do and like the rough patches that they have to iron out. But for this one, everything that they wanted to put into this game is here, but it's just so bare bones. Like the fact that the mission objectives are as simplistic as they can be, and the fact that there's only like five weapons. Add in the cars, radio stations, and even the locations. I mean, they knew what they wanted, they just couldn't reach it because of either budget restrictions and I suppose technology restrictions. I mean, there was passion and heart put into this product. I mean, they went out of their way to create a bunch of songs for the radio stations in different and many different genres. And after playing it for a little bit more, I do have to acknowledge that on its own, it's not half bad. I mean, the missions are still a bit frustrating to do, but I mean, they are doable. But the fact that I could say that on its own that it's alright just shows how much better the series would go on to become in later entries, even if the foundation was a bit shaky. Thanks for watching. What to move on to now. Uh, one last fun fact before I go is that um, the building on the front cover is Trump Tower.